congratulations on the new show. Um, I got to watch a few episodes and really enjoyed them so far. Thanks. Great. So why don't you start off by just, uh, you know, sort of setting up the premise a little bit for people who aren't familiar with it and talking about uh, who your characters are and um, what they're facing at the outset of the series. Uh, Children Ruin Everything is a new show coming out on Roku uh, May 13th, where um, every episode we play parents of uh, two kids, and every episode is us trying to relive something that we had before we had kids, like having a nice dinner or um, going on a road trip or things like that. But every time we try and recapture one of those things, children ruin everything but ultimately it's it, the show is kind of pro children and very lovely where they learn some new lesson about what uh they have rather than what they've lost yeah yeah now are you two parents that that do, the, do this do these uh episodes resonate for you um i have an eight month old so i'm not quite at the same uh stage that james and astrid are at but i get it <laughs> so which of the episodes so far have been the most like you're like oh my goodness that, that that's something that that uh that's happened to me well i mean actually in this new because right now we're shooting season two and um well astrid and james ha am i rooting am i allowed to say anything i don't know what I mean, you're allowed to say we're not well I, I relate to this season i'll, I'll say that <laughs> Uh, I mean, yeah. so I don't have kids, but I, I certainly relate to, uh, I have niece and nephews that I are very close with. And, um, uh, you know, did, as a person who doesn't have kids, I still love the show all the same. I think we all grew up with shows like this and we all relate um, to families like this and we feel a part of those families. And what's great about this first show is that it's a, it feels like a new version of one of these families where they're emotionally intelligent and they're they're having different kinds of conversations with their kids and with each other about how to raise their kids um, with all those sort of humor and, and, and love of those shows that we sort of grew up with. So to be a part of something like what like that is really, really. Uh, yeah, I, I thought one of, the, one of the interesting things about the episodes that I've seen is that it, it's very current. It's, you know, post COVID, or post COVID and, you know, people trying to emerge from that and, um, you know, a lot of the, the issues that come up, uh, you know, that are sort of in the news right now. Um, what what have you guys uh, appreciated about some of the scripts in terms of, you know, the topicality of some of the issues that, that the parents are facing? I mean, I, like, I think a lot of my friends with kids watch the show and find it very triggering for them. I mean, in a positive <laughs> way, because I think, I, I think it, it really like is writ Kurt made the show from his personal experience, obviously. And like, he's, you know, he's someone who has like a really unique view on how he sees not just the world, but how he sees being a parent, being a father and the way he sees children. And so I think there's something like really, really special in the way that he's writing. Um, and that's the kind of thing that makes the show different or from, you know, different than scripts that I've read before about families, because I, I, I think he finds like kids and family dynamics really, really fascinating, but in such a unique way. Um, I love Kurt. I want yeah. to live inside his brain. Yeah. Kurt, Kurt writes with a lot of love and it writes from, from his whole, from very specifically his life. He pours it out on every page. And so I think when you write something that specific, it becomes very universal, or as opposed to like you write something that you're, you're supposed to be about everybody, it kind of becomes about nobody. And so, yes, like the show has been released in Canada and certainly people um, here reproach me a lot and they're like, you have a camera inside my house. And they're just like, you're like, oh yeah, like all these things are very, they're very specific problems, but they're, they're in every household. Yeah. Now, do you have from season one, maybe a favorite scene that that you can talk about um, what that was like for you guys to film for each of you? Um, well, I really like there's a scene where they're trying to figure out how to plan for life after they die. And they're trying to figure out which parents will get their kids and sort of leads to uh, a real a real mess of a dinner oh, that they yeah. have with um, with 
Astrid's sister and my my sister and brother-in-law. So it, where they don't really want the kids. It's very, but it becomes into all the, because we haven't planned, um, it becomes a real pain in the ass for people to take our kids because we don't know what we're doing. Yeah, I like that scene too. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and you, for each of you, have uh, like maybe a behind-the-scenes moment that's something that's not on screen that uh, when you're looking back on this experience of filming the show, something that you'll remember about uh, about the set and about uh, the cast. Um, I guess just like you know, the first season we shot in the middle of like deep in the pandemic, so like the what we were dealing with behind the scenes was jarringly different than what was on camera. We were like, our crew was dropping left and right, <laughs> testing positive for COVID. We lost like full departments at a time. Well, she says and lost. Like, she means they're still lost. Yeah, they survived. They're still lost. But they yeah. were removed <laughs> from set. And so, you know, at one point we had like one of our producers doing props, like it was crazy. And so it was like at a time early on, so we didn't know much about it. And it was just like, mm -hmm. it felt like, it was very exciting. Yes. <laughs> so that's mostly what I remember from like behind the scenes. And just to give a different answer, that answer is for me too. But also Anna Sesmer is a guy who I have a, a real a history with. I've known him since I was 12. And to do a show with someone who have like a history with like that, and you can, um, that you have like a long history of like a loving relationship with is really everything. I mean, you don't get really a chance to do that in this business very often to come across people that you have those kinds of feelings with and then get to see them and work with them every day and then do intimate scenes with them. Yeah. So that's like something I'll always be thankful for the show, which was just a, by the way, freak occurrence, right? So it's just like, you know, when some freak occurrence like that happens, you kind of have to just say yes and go with it and thank the universe for it. Thank you.